Pakistan is perhaps the last country in the world that one would expect to launch successful mega projects, especially since the country has been nothing but a war wreck, plagued with violence and poverty for the past 50 years. But today, and despite the endless hardships and misery, Afghanistan has launched and is halfway through the implementation of its first mega project with zero foreign aid and literally not even engineering advice from anywhere. The project is an artificial river called the Kosh Tepa Canal that once completed will be one of the longest and largest irrigation canals in the world. What is the Kosh Tepa Canal? Why are they building it? And how did they succeed in achieving such a colossal miles? The Kosh Tepa Canal is a 285 kilometers long, 152 meters wide, and 8.5 meters deep artificial river in northern Afghanistan that extends from the AMU Darya River starting in the province of Balkh and passing through the provinces of Jawzian and Faryab. Approximately half of the canal has been completed, and the rest is being built at a rather fast pace due to an ongoing growing water and food shortages crisis across the country. Some countries that share the AMU Dore River with Afghanistan complained that the canal may affect their share of the river water. However, Afghanistan has vowed to not allow such a thing to happen. It is also clarified that it is the only country that literally does not benefit from the river, and thus it is entitled to its share. This canal is quite an urgent matter for the people of North Afghanistan, which has become an arid desert over the past few decades as a result of global warming declining groundwater reservoirs, and lack of sufficient irrigation systems. The canal is now bound to provide water to more than 1 million Afghanis, while enabling thousands of farmers to return to agriculture. This will be achieved as 55,000 hectares of land are turned into farms with a great focus on grains and wheat. In fact, the country aims to become a wheat exporter by 2028. The project began in March 2022 and is set to be completed in three phases. The first and second phases involve the actual digging of the canal, while the third phase is dedicated to the installation of water irrigation systems and other infrastructure. The project is managed by the Afghani National Development Corporation and is fully funded by the government from tax revenues. Initial estimates put the cost at $500 million. However, new estimates predict the need for additional $100 million. This leads us to wonder how the Afghanis managed to undertake such a colossal project with limited and rather old equipment, a limited number of experienced engineers, and no outside help. Some Asian media outlets were too harsh when describing how the Kosh Tepa Canal is being built. They alleged mistakes, carelessness, and poor engineering methods. However, we did our homework, and needless to say, those media outlets are dead wrong. The government funded the project and designed it based on intensive land surveying and soil studies. They did not send some diggers to conduct such complex work in a random manner. One of the main objectives of these studies was to ensure that water lifts are not needed due to associated costs, flood prevention during winter, and soil compatibility. Thus, the canal had to take a path on flat land with an elevation similar to that of the source area on the AMU Darya River. They also had to ensure that the canal path is located on the most fertile lands and within close proximity to towns and villages along the way. Once the canal path was set, 200 private contractors were spread over 114 sections, representing the first phase that extends 108 kilometers. As many as 7,000 haul truck and excavator drivers, among others, including project engineers, worked and are still working on the project as they have now moved to phase two, which is 177 kilometers long. Each contractor would spread tens of excavators in a line with enough space in between for the haul trucks. The trucks would then be filled and leave in an orderly manner to dump their loads in nearby designated low elevation areas. Once a section is dug and approved by the engineers and supervisors, the machines move to the next section and replicate the process based on detailed maps and specifications. The first step in the whole project involved the construction of 14 hydraulic gates that are topped by a bridge for vehicles. 
These gates were constructed for flood prevention during the winter and heavy rainy periods when the AMU Daria River levels rise. The 114 sections were separated from one another by an undug a few meters wide dirt wall in order to control the filling process and to prevent soil displacement at the banks, meaning the sections were filled rather slowly. Once section number one, which is closest to the AMU Daria River was completed, the water was allowed to flow into it. From there, other sections were filled gradually as the dirt walls between them were removed. We do have to emphasize here that this canal's floor and sides were not lined with concrete slabs, which depending on who you talk to is either good or bad. However, from our perspective and based on AMU Daria water levels, which have not declined as a result of filling phase one of the canal. No concrete slabs mean more eventual natural irrigation up a kilometer away from the canal sides, in addition to higher groundwater reservoir levels which act as backup water sources during potential harsh droughts. And there is also the money issue, because installing concrete slabs would have added more than a billion dollars to the cost, which is something Afghanistan cannot afford. Two concrete bridges, one for the Haraton Balk Highway and another for the railway, were also built and needless to say, the Afghans kept it simple and used a solid reinforced concrete slab design, which involves a cast in situ rather than precast. Parts of a major network of irrigation pipelines were also integrated with the completed phase one and the surrounding area. These underground irrigation pipelines are designed to give farmers up to a few kilometers away from the canal access to water. Other water mains were installed to connect with water pumps at nearby villages and towns. During the final stage of building phase one, up to 1 million cubic meters of soil were removed daily which needless to say is quite impressive, taking into consideration that most of the excavators and haul trucks they used were old, and in some cases from the 1960s. They also planted thousands of trees at the canal banks to reinforce the soil and prevent erosion. A 20 kilometer area was also planted with a variety of crops to test the soil and effectiveness of irrigation systems. People living near the canal also experienced and continue to experience an economic boom as thousands of workers are employed, old farms are replanted, and roads are improved. Contrary to some rather hateful reports, all contractors and their prospective workers were and are still being paid well and on time. Another phenomenon we observed while analyzing the project is the diversity in the workforce and the high level of optimism and happiness among workers, farmers, and residents in nearby areas who have been living in a negative environment for decades due to wars, droughts, lack of water, and widespread poverty. Another amazing phenomenon that surfaced with this project is the widespread use of solar panels to power homes and workshops in the nearby areas which are mostly disconnected from the rest of the world due to the lack of power infrastructure. Small solar panel fields are also popping up on the new farms to power water bumps. The entire project was slated to be completed in 2028, but at the current pace, we expect it to be ready by as early as 2025. More bridges and culverts are also under construction. Finally, we do have to emphasize here that Afghanistan and a good portion of its 40 million residents in mostly rural and remote areas are facing famine because the country is under extremely harsh sanctions. So we do hope more mega projects related to water management, farming, electricity, and infrastructure will follow this amazing project which is bound to help Afghanistan heal from the wounds of wars, progress, and become a productive member of the international community. Do you think Afghanistan under the rule of the Taliban can complete this mega project and initiate new ones? Let us know in the comments section 